Hey folks, today I'm in Merrimack, Massachusetts with David Haddon from Eskif. And uh, we're gonna, we got a couple different models here of canoes that we're gonna test out. You wanna tell me a little bit about these two, uh, two boats that we're gonna be in in a variety of fisheries the next couple days. Yeah, so two boats I brought. One is our Heron model, and that's uh, a solo or tandem boat. Um, you see it's set up here with the center seat. So uh, we were gonna, you were gonna fish one of your boats one day and I was gonna fish this one day. And I like that because it easily switches back and forth super fast as, as, as a tandem or a solo boat. The second one is our larger cargo. It's 17 feet compared to the 15 and a half foot Heron. And uh, for us, when we're gonna make some big uh, distant moves tomorrow and the next day, and, and you know probably burn about 15, 16 miles in the day. Um, I just thought having the extra long haul for more efficiency was the way to go. So what are the uh, the weight capacities of each of these? Uh, this one is, I think, almost 900 pounds. Uh, we have pictures all the time coming from Canada where someone's got a big bull moose and two guys in camping gear for a year inside the boat. So it's right up near 1,000 pounds. Uh, this one's a little bit less. It has a little bit less uh, freeboard in it, but, um, um, still well over 700 pounds. I think it's 850. And you've been using the, the Torquedo Travel 1103 for, what, a little little over a year? Yeah, I think I've had it a year. You guys got it to me right as COVID hit, so I had yep. a toy to play with uh, through COVID, and I, I just love it. Um, you know, we're gonna do some accurate speed tests today, but it seems to easily run at a max speed around seven to eight knots with each boat, and, um, you know, range on it. Um, the battery life is great. I mean, without, you know, pushing it hard, you know, I'll run it all day and what, don't even have to worry about it. So it's a super efficient motor and, and you know, I love it. Well, we'll get uh, speed and range numbers on each of these boats with the, the three horsepower electric outboard, the Torquedo Travel 1103 here. Um, we'll do that, you know, we'll probably do it with the, uh, with the cargo with both of us in it. And then we'll cool. get some solo numbers on this one just to give, give it, you know, a variety of, of you know data for yeah. people to get a concept of hey what what can I really do with uh, with an electric outboard and and you're just super lightweight canoes and that's the cool thing because you have no limitations with it it's it's so much more versatile than a than a fishing kayak that you know you and I started out on right. I mean solo tandem three people camping gear everything it just gives you so many more options and, and yeah I like it cool well, let's get them in the water all right let's go catch some fish. So we're out here on a, a freshwater lake, uh, really per my request, so that we could get some speed and range numbers. I don't like to test on uh, on tidal water because there's always moving water, and that influences it. So uh, we will display that speed. People want to know how fast does it go? How long can you run um, run an electric outboard with um, you know with a 915 watt hour? you know, waterproof lithium battery. So we'll get that data up there uh, in a little while, but I wanna have Dave talk a little bit about seasonally where we are with uh, with the different fisheries in this, you know, Massachusetts, New Hampshire area. Um, I know we planned on getting out after some stripers that are starting to come in, but today wasn't the day because of the wind, the wind's gonna pick up. So yeah. where what, what's been good? Uh, in, in recent weeks and, and what's about to be real good. Yeah, so recent weeks up here the trout fishing has been amazing. Uh, they did a lot of stockings, uh, so a lot of people really got on trout for a while. Uh, the loyal bass fishing guys stayed on the lakes and bass fished. Uh, we've seen a lot of beds. It seems like the bass have just come off the beds, so I'm sure uh, this lake parking lot would have been filled with boats a few weeks ago. Um, the, the, the big thing, my big thing is salt water. So uh, three weeks ago, the, the striped bass showed up and, and uh, that fishery now on the coast has, has gone off. Um, today, we just had all three things, tide, light, and uh, wind working against us. So it makes it nice to just, you know, come out, put up the trolling motor on this, this canoe and just kind of poke around this lake a little bit and see what we can pick up. So. I mean, I'm assuming we'll get a mixed bag today, uh, you know, pan fish. Uh, we'll likely get some bass, and uh, I'm sure we'll get a pickerel. All right, Jeff, you're hooked up. Hey, while you're landing that, let me ask you a question. So you started off in a kayak, everyone thinks, but really your roots are more in a canoe. 
Yeah, as a as a kid, I was in Boy Scouts and did you know canoeing merit badge and and uh, you know that was really my introduction to to paddle sports was in the canoe you know doing canoeing merit badge and eventually I went to uh, the high adventure base in Maine it's called Matagammon and we did like I think it was 10 days up in the northern woods of Maine That's you know, great. with those I think they were Old Town Discovery 158s and uh, really really enjoyed spending time you know extended periods of time out in nature and I think that's you know I think a lot of the fishing kayaks are great for day trips going out and, and coming back and, and you come back to a campsite or you come back to a hotel or whatever you're doing um, but staying out there for extended periods of time and carrying as much gear as you need yeah. that's I think one of the critical things of you know um, of having a canoe is capacity and um you know i i fished a lot out of the the family you know 17 foot grumman aluminum you know on the um uh, you know on the on the upper potomac for you know for smallmouth and we'd go out and, and you know stay out a couple couple uh nights in a row you know we we do channel cats um, okay. Channel catfish at night. Got a little yellow perch here. And, you know, being able to carry stuff to do primitive camping is, is I think, a critical part of why, you know, if that's the kind of fishing that you want to do, where you're camping and fishing, you know, you're not, you can do it with a, with a fishing kayak, but it's just not, not quite as... Um, as ideal as when you, you know, when you have this much capacity. So let me ask you, um, I know that seeding is, is an important consideration and how many anglers that you want to, that you want to take with you. Um, and, and this, you know, the cargo here, you can do what? You have one, two, three, four seats that you can do. Um, besides how many people can be in a in a kayak, you know, seating capacity. What are the other considerations you think is important, you know, when, when someone's looking to buy a canoe? Yeah, well, I definitely, I mean, that's where the advantage of the canoe comes in over the kayaks and that you can now start taking multiple people. You know, like this boat would be perfectly suited for a family of four, you know, mm -hmm. husband, wife, and two little kids. Or um, two people going out like... You know, boundary water type, you know, Correct. going out for a week and carrying everything. You we need. have a lot of people that can you camp from this, you know, and the, they'll they'll take it as and set up a base camp somewhere and, and fish out of that base camp and, and uh, you know, carry as much gear as they want. I mean, you, you can see, I mean, as we talked earlier, capacity is a, a thousand pounds for this boat. That's awesome. Sure enough. So, David, tell me about your... Your history and it, I guess the the career you've had in paddle sports and and what your role is with a skiff now. Yeah, so I, I mean I pretty much have been in the paddle sport industry for about twenty years. I worked for you know, many of the bigger companies, Dagger, Old Town, Mad River. Um, you know, currently with a skiff, my role is to uh, help develop business and uh, look for opportunities, find new dealers. Um, that's where a lot of these newer, some of these newer square stern models you're seeing them come from, uh, you know, those ideas and just, you know, my passion for, for the um, angling uh, side. Um, one of the boats that we've just introduced, it doesn't work with the Torquedo yet, but it should very soon. And uh, that's a little 40 pound boat that is great for getting into uh, little lakes and, and uh, just lets you access a lot of places that um, you can't get most boats into. Which and model I, is that? That's the Adirondack. Yeah. Um, or, and you and I were look, looking yeah. at it. You and I looked I at it yesterday at your house, and I was like, it, it reminds me a lot of the the Commander or the Jackson Kilroy or the Native Ultimate. All those boats that are, they, they said, you know, well, it's a hybrid. Well, it's a plastic canoe, basically. And there's, there's such a demand for that with that, you know, just, you know, throw it on your shoulder and run through the woods to, to good water. 
Yeah, and like you, like you were talking about, I think, you know, those designs are very popular for that very reason. Now, it's the question you and I ask, you know, okay, can you meld that with a, with a motor and get, you know, some of the advantages that, that you have of, you know, greater range for people. Right. Um, um, you know, paddling's great, but if you have to make a six, seven mile run, you know, that's a hard thing for your average person. Also, you know, you and I were talking about some of the days we've been out with our, our torpedo uh, equipped boats and, and, you know, we'll go 18, 20, 25 miles. Right. And, you know, for your average person, I mean, that's a long day on the water if they're paddling the whole time. Um, also using the motor, you know, as we've been today to get between dead spots, um, it just allows you to hit m- many more productive areas and, and quickly skip over those areas that, that aren't as productive. Well, if we haven't really shown the full power of this setup, why don't you stop right, it and give us, give us a, uh, let's give it some, you know, I know the, you know, we, I got 7.1 out of the, uh, the Heron. So. Yeah. I, I think we're probably getting close to that. I mean, this is a much more, you know, efficient haul. Uh, I, I thought this was going over eight when I had it the other day, just kind of right. things. But yeah, you can, I mean, again, just, you know, now we've just flown through four or 600 yards. That would have taken us, you know, five to 10 minutes to paddle. Right. Uh, now we're coming up on another productive spot. You can whack out a few more giant bluegill. <laughs> cool. All right. One of the coolest things about a Torquedo setup is that there's a GPS unit in the lithium battery that sits on top here. Uh, that tells you your speed, but it also helps calculate your remaining range. And I'm going to show you on the throttle display exactly what I'm talking about. So this is the, the tiller throttle. And it actually, it, when you take it off, it just comes off like that. And the battery also comes off so that you can you can pull this this lithium battery off and just take it you know take it in to charge it but I'm gonna leave it where it should be for now and this this little pin just keeps it from bouncing around a little bit as you twist this and this you know this is obviously how you're you're steering the motor but you twist this to to go forward and we're gonna we're gonna go just dump all the energy into it right off the bat. You can see that we're running at, we have 69% of the battery life remaining, 3.2 miles of remaining range, and we are going 6.6 miles per hour, 6.7 using 1100 watts. More range than than what you just had there. You just back off on this this uh, tiller throttle until you get that. Let me show you that what that looks like. Say you had to go uh, six miles and you want to be able to use as much speed as possible going into it. So, all right, we have 2.9 miles of remaining range. We're gonna back off a little bit. And you can see right away that that remaining range number is growing. So it's at 4.7. I'm backing off a little bit more. There we're up over six miles of range. Five five is there briefly, five eight there. So once you get it above six six miles of remaining range you get it pinned right on that you know that you're going to get back to wherever it is you need to go and you're going to go at maximum speed and not really worry about running out of power because you know precisely how much power you have left in this motor